This time I build an outdoor concrete table that looks like a stone table. You want one too? Follow me and lass uns anfangen. I used a 4x4, a 2x4 and a piece of walnut. For the structure I used foam board insulation, Formula 150. Here I got definitely a little bit too excited to get started with the project and forgot to wear my respirator, so you do better and wear one. You will need four side pieces, one piece for the top and one piece for the inside. For the glue up I'm using spray foam, sealant and screws. Apply the sealant on the corners and stick the pieces together, building an open box. The screws are only needed to keep the pieces together while drying. Next up, you will need a wire brush to scratch up the surface to make the concrete stick to the foam board. Just run it over the surface to make small grooves. While the box is fully drying, I will take the 2x4 and clean it up a bit. To do so, I'm using my planer. I do have a small workshop, therefore I love that lots of my tools are mounted on reels and store away very neatly. I'm using the 2x4s to build a frame that will be inserted on the bottom side of the box. To build the frame, I decided to use pocket screws. If you are using a crack, make sure it's set up correctly. Two screws on each side will be sufficient. Make sure the pieces are square and apply pressure while screwing. And this is how the piece will sit in the box. Now the table can be placed securely onto the legs that I will build at a later point. But before, let's make sure to secure the frame to the box. The screws will poke right through the insulation and screw into the wood. Make sure you let the screw stick out a bit. Once you apply the concrete, the screw head will be covered with concrete and therefore hold the wood in place. To prop up the table while applying the concrete, I cut up some pieces of lumber. But you can use anything you have laying around that's sturdy enough to hold up the heavy concrete table. I used my miter saw to cut equal size pieces. And yes, that happened. I got myself a little splinter in my finger. Ouch. Alright, let's clean this up and let's keep going. And here we have all four pieces. I placed the box onto my table saw workbench and propped it up with the pieces I just cut. Like this, I'm able to cover the bottom side of the box of cement and it also gives me a comfortable height when I'm applying the concrete. The scratch coat mixture I'm using you can see on the screen and in the description below. Mix them all together. This recipe mixture I got from Warren Ness as I took one of his classes. If you haven't seen the video yet, check it out. Also, if you like to work more with cement, check out his videos. He does some amazing things. And this is about the consistency you will go for. Apply the scratch coat onto the form with some pressure. Make sure you don't lift up your hands from the concrete while you apply it. This would create some suction and you end up with air pockets that can damage the piece later. Once you apply the scratch coat, use your fingers to add grooves for the hard coat. Of course I wanted to add some walnut to this project and I decided to add it as an accent line. I flattened out some of the concrete to be able to attach the walnut to a leveled area. I let the scratch coat dry overnight and started my day by building the legs for the table. Therefore, I'm using the 4x4. Using my miter saw, I'm cutting a 45 degree angle. Don't forget your eyes and ears. The miter saw blade isn't big enough to cut through the 4x4 when using a 45 degree angle. Therefore, I'm using my Japanese pole saw to cut off the little piece that's still attached. The 4x4 wasn't squared at all, so I took my jointer to square up two of the sides. 
The other two sides I will square up with my planer. And look how perfect this looks. Passt wie angegossen. To round over the edges a bit, I used my handheld Makita router. Let's do a little cleanup to get ready for sanding. And like always, let's have some fun with it. And that will be enough sanding. Time to connect the pieces. To do so, I'm using a Makita biscuit jointer. Next up is the glue up. Apply the glue, spread the glue, Put a biscuit in and put the pieces together. When you're tightening the clamps, make sure you have an equal amount of pressure on each side to keep the piece square. As for the walnut accent table slash bench, I will connect the pieces with my biscuit jointer as well. I've built a similar bench in a previous video in more detail if you like another video for the process. Click the link above or in the description below. And now it's time for a little bit more sanding. I started with 120 grit and worked my way up to 320 grit. And this is how the pieces are going to be glued together. Apply the glue, spread the glue, and put the pieces together. Tighten the clamps just enough to hold the pieces in place. Once the glue has dried, take off the clamps and give it one last sand. Now it's time to fit the piece onto the table. And it fits perfectly. Before we start applying the moist cement, it's a good idea to seal up the bottom of the piece with fast drying polyurethane. To not get a finish onto the top side, I glued it off. Make sure you wipe off any dust before applying the spray finish. Shake the bottle, shake shake the bottle. You wonder why I only finished the bottom side of the piece? I'd like to apply a more durable outdoor UV resistant varnish to the piece. And now we are ready for the top coat. The mixture is similar to the scratch coat, however, this one does not have the fibers in it, but more carves. Mix the ingredients together. Once the ingredients are properly mixed, it's time to apply the hard coat. 
Moisten the surface with water. The trick here is to not get any air holes. This will weaken the structure. Once you wrapped in the first layer, it's time to apply a larger amount so you have enough material to form the shape of the rocks. That's the most fun of this project. And again. And one more time. Once you have applied enough material, take a trowel to shape the rock form. The top surface of the table are leveled to the same height of the walnut lumber and made it super flat. To get a rock pattern into the cement, I used different pattern rollers. One I purchased of Amazon, the other one I made myself using instructions provided in one of Warren S's videos. Let the concrete dry for a few hours before using the pattern rollers, so the concrete will keep the pattern shape. Once you got a nice pattern print, let the concrete dry just enough so you can chip off larger pieces to make the rock look natural. It cannot be too wet so the concrete won't break off. And it cannot be too hard so the concrete won't break off anymore. So keep checking throughout the drying process. And that's what we have so far. It almost looks a little bit too busy with too many cracks. But what do you think? Do you like it? While the concrete is drying, it's time to apply the varnish to the walnut. The varnish I'm using is from Total Boat. Apply multiple coats and let it dry in between. While the varnish is drying, let's tackle the legs for the table. I gave it one last sand and now it's time to stain it with Expresso Colored Wood Stain. Just dip the rack into the stain and apply it all over the wood. Let this dry overnight. And next up is the coloring of the concrete. For the colors, I'm using a gray and a white tone. To apply the color, I'm using a spray bottle, a brush and a sponge. You want to try to achieve a most natural look as possible. Pay attention to where the cracks would cast a shadow and color those parts a little darker to achieve a dimensional look. And this is how it will look with a few more layers of color. I think this is how dark I want to take it. I will stop here. Now it's time to let the color dry and after let's add a few layers of sealer. And we are fertig! Like always, thank you so much for watching and all the support. A special thanks to the viewers that give me a little extra support to keep this channel going by using the super thanks button below. See you next time. Tschüss!